Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a new episode of Last Claudia. Today we've got a lot of fun stuff to talk about. I'm highly looking forward to this. Uh, we're going to be talking about, obviously, the new banner with the new character and arc. There's also a Valentine's arc that I also want to talk about. And some of you that already know me well enough will know why I like it without even looking at it. And then, of course, I'm going to go over some of the paid stuff like we always do. And just briefly to go over why I actually like this event because it's actually pretty cool. So let's get started. Starting with Inventive Queen Mary. So, taking a look at her stats here, fully maxed out, we have HP 7003, which is really good. Strength of Defense, 1330 and 1455 respectively. Also good stats with the kind of character she is. Also, her resistances are pretty interesting. So, for attribute, we have resistance plus 10 to fire, ice, and wind with a 30 uh, minus to thunder, which makes sense because she's wearing armor. Another thing to notice is that she can look at her type, she's actually considered a machine. And that's because of the armor she's wearing. You know, if you looked at the story, you already know why. So just remember that this is a machine type unit. This is not going to be in the human category, if you will. Uh, resistances for ailments is poison. We have curse and we have illness. And of course, she's weak to stun, which makes sense because she's in a machine. So again, the way they built this character is very, very specific to basically what she what she built so pretty cool i like it so far uh, abilities so the skills and special all have different elements which is really cool because this is a character that you can really build to be something very specific a lot of fun uh now outside of the elements there are a couple of other specific things to see here second skill you get to do a you have a chance to give a speed cut debuff I don't know, obviously, if this is as good as the Nocturne Teen Keeley's version. If so, that's going to be really great. If not, well, it's fine. And her special also has a damage cap of 5,000. So if you're trying to do an ultimate boost build for her, uh, you'll get rewarded by extra damage cap. So pretty good. Now, this is where things get really interesting, the traits. So we'll start with power gear. Now, these are going to be some long text here, so bear with me. When hitting an attribute weakness, damage plus 50%, damage cut 5,000. When attacking with skills, cut enemy attribute resistance and then deal damage. For each repeat of a skill, cut attribute resistance more. And of course, it's a max of minus 15% and a recess on each wave. So basically, if you're hitting an enemy weakness, and that's going to be a pattern with this character is hitting weaknesses, you're going to get a 5,000 damage cap reward for this, plus 50% more damage, which is a lot of extra damage. So, and then at the same time, you can also cut enemy attribute weakness further to enable her and other characters. It's pretty strong, in all honesty. This is a really, really good way to start. Uh, I would say this is more for bosses. That's really where this is going to be, where she's going to shine here. Let's take a look at the second trait. Built-in Golem Core. Abilities must be set to use skills. There's a reason it says that. We'll go into that. Based on which skills are usable, nullify flinch, cut magic attack damage from an element 20%. Now, depending on which skill you're using will depend on which element it is. So if you have the skill 1 set, it's Earth. Skill 2 will be Fire. Skill 3 will be Ice. Boost skill damage based on the number of unusable skills. So for one skill, 50%. For two skills, 200%. All right, so to kind of break this down, this is telling you that if you want to maximize the damage you want to use with her, especially if you're building for a certain element resistance, which I highly recommend doing, you will get a benefit of more damage is what it boils down to. So you, oh, first of all, you nullify flinch and cut magic attack damage. And the, uh, you get some defense buff, basically, for whichever element it is. And then your skill damage will go up by 200%, which is if you're building just one skill. Uh, so that's really, really powerful potential there to get her to do tons of damage. Like this woman is set really, really good. And we'll go over more why you only want to use one skill potentially with this character, because there's a lot, there's more to this. It's not just this. So let's take a look at the skills that she has. So she has one magic called Limiter Release. So for 20 seconds, her HP, Strength, Defense, Intelligence, and Mine are up by 30%. So that's a pretty big boost for all those skills or stats. 
Uh, and boost chance of auto gravity boost activating once per wave. And of course, auto gravity boost she's had before, but we'll read it again later on when it comes up. So she gets Fighting Spirit 5, Resolve Up 3, Royal Armor Fiend Shield, which is really cool. She basically gets a 20% damage reduction against beast, fish, plants, insect, bird, and creatures. So she just shrugs it, 20%. Auto Protect, Auto Regen, Auto Haste, Pride 2, Elemental Drive, which makes a sense because, again, she's all about doing some elemental damage and getting, you know, as much damage up there as possible. Weak point boost, again, taking advantage of element resistance or weaknesses. So this is adding more potential damage. We have Pose of Glory, Shockwave, Two-Handed Machine, and Dual Wield. I find it funny that they put both of these on here, but I get why they did that. I mean, this is, again, a character that's supposed to be the most customizable use that we've ever had. Um, not only do you have to pick a skill to use to get the biggest benefit, but you also have the option of going single wield with a two-handed thing, or you can do dual wield. Now, I know most people are going to scream dual wield. That's just how it is. Personally, do what you want. I mean, whatever you enjoy, however your play style is, enjoy it. That, that's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, so moving along, we got machine boost, machine mega boost, so more damage cap. Armor mega boost. So if you're doing a single-handed thing, uh, basically when armor is equipped, defense plus 20%, physical damage taken minus 10%, and damage taken from bosses minus 10%. Again, she's a boss slayer. That's really what it boils down to for the most part. Indomitable Spirit, Sharp Eyes, Destroyer. Uh, so basically she's also going to be a breaker, which makes sense because her original form was a breaker. So that makes perfect sense. So Destroyer, we got Giant Killing 2, Beast Alliance, Extra Weakness Attack. Again, taking advantage of weaknesses to deal more damage. I believe this is a pursuit attack, but I could be wrong. But if it is, then that just makes her even better. The Ulma Medic System. So when afflicted with a basic status element, chance to recover HP plus 20% and heal the status element. So just pretty cool. Auto to gravity boost. So this is what we saw earlier. Chance to resist flinch from physical attacks. Not bad. And now here is where things get really interesting. When I was talking about only using one skill, this is why it matters right here. So we have laser arm. We'll start with that. Must be set to use skill one. Now, when I see that phrase right there, what that tells me is if you do not have this turned on, you will not be able to use that skill. So it'll literally be off and unusable. That's the way I'm reading it. I don't have the character yet, but I'm pretty sure that's what this means. Moving along, skill one damage cap 10,000. SAT recovery speed 100%. Skill two and skill three damage cap will be reduced by 5,000 and SAT recovery speed reduced by 50%. Okay, so what this is basically saying is as long as you have one of these three on there, that one will get a 10,000 damage cap and then, you know, 100% SAT recovery speed. Now, there will be penalties to the other two skills, but the thing is, ideally, you'll have them turned off. So this is kind of encouraging you to pick one based off of what boss you're fighting. Uh, so the radiator is the same thing, but for skill two. So same damage cap, same recovery speed, same penalties for other skills. And then Missile Pot is the skill three version. So depending on what your strategy is for that fight will depend on which one you want. And I would recommend, this is what I would do personally. I would put whichever one I want on and turn the other two off. So you don't have to, don't have to care about a penalty and then whatever skill you're using, it's going to be recovering fast and you're just going to be hitting with tons of damage. Now keep in mind, since he does have auto haste, that kind of helps her recovering your SCT as well. And I'm sure there are accessories that also boost SCT. So... In all honesty, you know, even though you're only you're only reduced to using one skill, I think you'll be fine. I really do. So, plus starting with skill charges as well will help. Uh, maybe even a quick trigger. And I don't know how well that'll work because if, if it hits a skill that you can't use, then I guess it's kind of a waste. But uh, there might be, it would be cool if it interacted to where since it checks of what's active, and if the only skill that's active, you automatically get a skill stock. That would be really, really cool. But again, that would take some testing to see how that interaction would work. But uh, so yeah, basically use only one of these two, one of these skills and turn the other two off if you want to get the best benefit, depending on what the boss you're fighting is. And then we have dash boots. So when using a regular attack or skill, boost movement speed if far enough away from the enemy. So pretty cool. She has like those boots that kind of, you know, like you fly like Iron Man or whatever. So kind of makes sense. Or even Mega Man, really, if you're in like the Mega Man X series. It's kind of like that. So either way, Dash Boots, really, really good. So personally, 
This is one of the, my favorite units that I've seen in a long time, and I'll explain why. This is a character that has the biggest amount of customization I've ever seen. First off, this is a character where you basically pick what skill you want to use to get the most benefit for the most damage. Secondly, you have a choice of either using dual wield or two-headed weapon. Which, again, is kind of a personal preference or depending on what mode you're using her in. Will kind of be, you know, determine how that'll work out for you. But either way, the fact that they give you options with her, I think is fantastic. It's a lot of fun. She's such a fun looking unit uh, to use. I, I, you know, hopefully I'll get her eventually and I'll be able to kind of have fun just using her in general. But just keep in mind that she is a general pull, which is basically not limited unit. So she'll be in the general pull from today going forward. So you don't have to worry about rushing and spending your crystals on her. There's only one situation where I would recommend spending crystals on her, and I'll be explaining that soon. Because there is a benefit to potentially spending crystals on her, and you're gonna see why. But overall, I think if you pull this girl, you're gonna be very happy with her when you actually use her correctly. Onward to the Ark. This is the Durandal Reborn. So the Ark trait says each wave gradually cut damage taken, uh, max of 25%. When activated by a status element, I'm sorry, when afflicted, yeah, affected by a status element, nullify flinch for regular attacks, continuous protection effect. It's an okay trade, nothing that really screams yay, it's just okay. Uh, as far as the abilities you can learn, we have Resolve Up, Illness Resist, Defense Down Evasion, which is a new one, I think it's chance to nullify defense down debuffs afflicted by an enemy's active skills, it's okay. Uh, machine Geyser, now this is a skill I actually like. Magic attacks are effective against machines, so basically you get yourself a magical slayer for magic, or machine. So pretty cool, I like that a lot. High protection and auto fort, continuous fort effect. So, the skills, the only one that matters to me is Machine Geyser. I like using certain mages like Eliza, so makes perfect sense. Take a look at the accessory. This is the Palm Calculometer. Yeah, so this is an accessory that has strength and intelligence of plus 66. Machine equipped movement speed up, skill damage plus 10%, uh, with no resistances at all. So overall, this is an okay accessory, specifically because of the movement speed. Now, you do have to have a machine equipped, so you're going to be giving this only certain characters that use machine, which is fine. Uh, and then, of course, skill damage plus 10%. That's going to be really, really good for people who have really high damage caps and you want to try to reset damage cap. This will help you a little bit while making you faster. So this is actually a pretty good accessory. I like it. I think it's good. So overall, this is an okay arc that has a really good skill, machine geyser, and a really good accessory. I'll take it. Now keep in mind that we do have the Valentine Challenge. So basically this is a three by three board. If you do all of the easy stuff it asks you to do, you'll be able to get this new arc. But we're gonna go ahead and talk about it. Welcome to the most appealing arc I've ever seen. This is Valentine's Night. So let's take a moment to just appreciate what we have right here. Look at that. This is just a lady going out, dressed up all nice. You know, we have, uh, and there's people in the background too you might find familiar. So don't forget to look around. Man, there'd be a Paco right now. But yeah, so obviously for those who know me well enough know why I like this artwork so we won't go into it though we're just going to go ahead and talk about the arc in general so this particular arc arc trait says when hp is restored by an active skill hp recovery plus 30 percent uh for male defense and mind gifts plus 10 percent if you're a female strength and intelligence plus 10 percent battle in when at least one AL skill is set recover recover special gauge plus five percent so for me personally, when I see that last part, this screams Alice. Because as far as characters with really, really strong specials, Alice to me is like number one as far as the females are concerned. And uh, so I would 100% be giving this to her, either form, and just letting that special gauge fill up. And then, you know, you could do any of the L's that you want, whichever you think is better. I would say go with the SCT recovery one. And yeah, pretty good. Or actually, no, you don't need the SCT recovery one because you could just equip a uh, uh, Pirate's Feast. So probably go with the with the uh, one that gives you more either MP or HP, depending on what you're, you're building for. But either way, I like it. I actually like the arc trait. Uh, like I said, depending on what, who's equipped with it, it will depend on what buffs they get. But uh, I think this has a lot of potential. I think it's pretty cool. 
Let's take a look at the uh, skills you can learn. So we have all three of the L. So L is a victory, honor, and glory. We have girls party. This is the new one here. So males or other more likely to be targeted by enemies. Females less likely to be targeted by enemies. And we have revenge medis. Chance to inflict mind upon. I'm sorry. Chance to increase mind upon taking damage. Okay. And then you have Sorcerer Geyser. So this is another one of those uh, magical slayers here. So for nine, magic attacks are effective against sorcerers. So yeah, I like Mag Sorcerer Geyser the most out of all these skills. So this is really what I would be using with Eliza and some of the other characters that are made as specifically Eliza for me. But yeah, I like that. So the skills you can learn are interesting, but really Sorcerer Geyser is the one that I like the most. And then let's take a look at the Arc Ether Award. This is the Chocolate Bonbon. So, this accessory has HP plus 300, Strength 59, Mine 23, Battlestar Autocast Brave and Vitality. So, again, this kind of screams Cyber Slayer Alice, or, I'm sorry, Swimsuit Alice, because you want her to, you know, have a higher office and make her a little more uh, durable. So, why not? You also get resistance to illness as well, so she's being healed for any reason. Uh, you'll have less chance of, you know, someone making it where you can't heal. So, yeah, overall, I think this is a decent accessory. I'm not going to say it's super great, but I think it's all right. I think it's all right overall. So, again, the biggest reason that I like this arc is the artwork. I want to see more of this, obviously. We're not going to talk about why. I think some of you that know me well enough know why. But we're not going to go there. We're just going to move on. Time to talk about credentials. Now, when I mentioned earlier that there's only one reason that you should consider spending crystals... This is the reason right here. If you really, really like this character, like really, really like using her in general, you're going to want one or probably both of these items. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. So we're going to start with the machine arm or Machina arm. Sorry, Machina. So this is an earth based machine. Skill damage. Oh, sorry. Strength 252, which is pretty good. Defense 15, mine plus 30. Skill damage plus 20%. Skill SCT recovery speed plus 10%. When hitting an elemental weakness, damage cap 2,000. This is literally the perfect item for Merity. Seriously. So, remember earlier when we were talking about how, you know, she's dealing with elemental weaknesses. You want to get damaged up as much as possible. Well, this does everything that you're looking for. You're getting that plus 20% of the damage for skills, faster SCT recovery, and extra damage cap. This is literally, like, the perfect item for her. So, yeah, I 100% I think this is great. This is a great paid item. This is definitely, in my opinion, worth it. And then, take a look at the next one. Now, this is the one that's going to be a little divisive because, again, armor is not very popular in this game because most people like to do a wield. But if you are the type that likes to single wield, this is the reason that you will want to single wield right here. So, this armor has 300 HP. 220, 223 defense, 128 mine. These are fantastic defense stats, by the way, especially the defense of mine. Uh, and then you have physical attack damage cap 3,500. Let's just stop right there. You have a piece of armor giving you 3,500 damage cap. All right. Then physical attack damage plus 10% and damage taken minus 10%. You also get resistance to thunder plus 20, which kind of helps with your weakness. And you get a resistance to stun, which also helps with your weakness. So, this is strong for an armor piece. So, if you are the kind of person that doesn't mind single wielding and just using two-handed stuff, this is where it benefits you the most. Because you get this, which gives you more damage cap, more physical attack damage, and a little bit of defense. Actually, a lot of defense, to be perfectly honest. It's not just damage taken minus 10%, but you're also getting a boost in your defensive stats in general. And, of course, again, you are slightly making up for some of your weaknesses. So, this is just really, really a good package. So, now let's say you, you you can only afford to get one of the two. You can't do both. I mean, honestly, for this specific character, if you, if you can afford it, get both. Like, seriously, this is, like, too good for a character like this. But if you can only choose one, first, it's going to depend on how you're going to build her. I mean, if you're dual wielding, you obviously pick the weapon, right? Because you don't care about armor. But if you are going to do the two-handed route... There are other machines that you can use. However, I don't know how many Earth attribute machines that exist, but you might not need an Earth weapon. Keep in mind that she can deal damage based off of whatever, you know, skill you set up. 
So the type of element that your machine is might not matter so much. So I'm thinking that you might consider the armor in all honesty. Because again, you're getting higher damage cap, good good amount of defense so she's not so, so squishy. And uh, you know, it's just, again, it's really the, mostly the damage cap and the stats are just really where it's at. Everything else is just an added bonus, which is all really good, just a total package. Whereas with the weapon, I mean, don't get me wrong. This weapon is good too. It really is. I'm gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie to you. I have no idea what the right item is here. I am so glad that I'm not actually pulling for this character using crystals because if I was, I would actually be torn between which one to get. Now again, if you're dual wielding, this is easy. But if you're single wielding, there's a debate here. Because I mean, even though you're getting less damage cap, you are still getting faster SET and more damage in general as far as like how much damage you're dealing with your skills. So it's, that's a toughie. That's a real, real toughie. But I'm just gonna say go for the armor only because you're getting higher damage cap and it's just good defense. That, that's really what I'm gonna go with this one. So, oof, wow. Yeah, that's, so this is what I like. I like the fact that we're going into the direction where the paid gear is actually worth it. It's actually good gear. This is kind of what I wanna see. If I'm gonna spend money, I need to be able to tell that my money is worth it. And this is a great example of the money being worth it. So overall, I think this is a great banner. I think that the paid items are great. And the free LR, I mean, obviously I, I personally love that. Even without the skills and all that, I think the art is the best. It's my favorite arc in terms of looks. Again, some of you know why, we won't go into that. But let's take a look at the event itself. So this event I love right now. This is giving me Dr. Stone vibes. So for those of you that are around for during the Dr. Stone collab, you basically had to pick up materials to, to invent certain items um, that made other items and you got to, you know, get rewards based off of it. This is basically what this is. You are picking up materials to create, to craft certain items. And here you go. So right now I've crafted everything except the game suit because we can't craft it yet because you have to wait for the maintenance in the 17th. But everything else I've already made one of, so I'm happy. So right now I'm just saving up materials for the three things in green so I can purchase whatever I want to purchase. And uh, that's pretty much it. And of course, this tells you what materials you have held. Doesn't really matter to me in the trading space. So whatever extra stuff you have, which I haven't really crafted nothing for a while, but you get some decent stuff. I think I've already purchased a few things. Uh, yeah, I purchased a Marity Prism because I know I'll pull her one day. And I also got some... Uh, uh, some premium gotcha tickets. Now, I am going to do a multi spin. I have at least 10 of these, so I'm going to do one multi to see if I'm lucky enough to pull her with those tickets. So, this will be fun. We'll do it while we're recording. But yeah, so basically, the, again, just like Dr. Stone, you're just, you know, crafting materials. And I think those materials are going to make something better later on, which is really, really cool. So, this is a very interactive thing. You're, you're doing the same levels over and over, sure. But by doing this, you're getting something out of it. You're, there's going to be a reward later on for doing all of this, you know, and basically you want to do hard mode if you can of each one of these three, uh, where it says, you know, where all this says available, do like each of these a few times so you can help craft your materials. So yeah, really, really cool of it. I'm really happy that they gave this to us. You do also get mission rewards. So definitely, you know, Go ahead and do what you got to do. I've already gotten a few. Oh, sorry, this is the second event. But yeah, this is for the first event. So, you know, there's some stuff that you can pull. And then uh, you also have a trading space, which I already showed you earlier, uh, where you can use the stuff that you've crafted to get some of this good stuff. Now, keep in mind that there's also a second event. This is kind of the second version of the prologue to the future that we've had in the past. So you get to play this again. If you've already seen the story, you can just skip the story and just play these modes. Uh, you can collect more mission rewards. So the bottom stuff right here is some of the stuff that you can get for her. So you can eventually get more tickets. You can get a, a, a Merity, original Mary Merity Prism if you want that. Uh, and of course you get more resources just in general. So yeah, a decent thing to do here too, if you you know want to spare a little extra time. But the main focus should definitely be the, uh, the cute innovation one. That's where it's going to be all the crafting and all that good stuff. So... There you go. But again, this is this is probably the most fun event that I've seen in a while. I know we just had a collab, but this beats that collab all, all day, in my opinion. All right, so let's go ahead and do a gotcha pull. Let's do the uh, ticket thing. Let me just find it first. Here we go. I have 11. We're just going to do 10. 
do our only ten pull here. See if we're lucky. I really hope I get her because I actually really, really like her. She's a character that I will use a lot if I get her. Or we're gonna let her play. The question: Do we get a squad? Oh, we're starting off on a yellow. We get three out of four of the squad, so okay. So we'll, we'll see. We're still a chance. All right, Kyle, swing that sword. I got two. We get a third one. Nope. We're we'll returning red. Oh, that's a good sign. Oh, please give me her. Let me be lucky. Ooh, two red. Oh my god, you gotta be kidding me. Ah, boo. Oh, what a tease. Such a tease. Man, that actually makes me sad. I was, I was like, man, we got a chance. We got two reds, but no. Not so lucky. That's okay. Um, again, I would recommend just spending tickets. Don't use any crystals unless you're doing paid gear. That's the only reason to spend crystals, and that's, you know, if you want to get those pieces of equipment, because I think it's 100% worth it. So overall, great banner, fantastic LR for the, you know, Valentine's thing, fantastic event. There, This is just like the best overall thing I've seen in a while. Super, super psyched, super happy. Thank you, Adis, for this entire event and all these arcs. So beautiful. So until next time, be kind and grind and later.